Hi students, Tim from Lessons on the Web once again today. Hopefully everybody's doing great. And we are going to be talking about the chromatic scale today. So what is a chromatic scale exactly? Well, chromatic scale simply is when you start at one note, it can start on any note really, and you go up or down, but you go up or down by every single note. Like so every, as they call semitone or half step. So that would be like going from C to C sharp to D to D sharp to E to F to F sharp to G, A, uh, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and then so forth. So you're playing literally every single half step or semitone between two notes. So you can start on any note. I We're going to talk about C today. I think, you know, as you probably have guessed by now, C is a pretty easy starting point for almost anything. So this is where... Um, where things are going to start. So we have C here, right? And what I like to do, the fingering that I use is between the, where it alternates white, black, white, black, white, I use fingers one, three, which is thumb, middle, thumb, middle, thumb. So one, three, one, three, one, two. And then when you get to the half step between the two white keys, you're going to use the fingers one and two. So the finger is one, three, one, three, and then right here we have a group of two coming up, but I'm gonna hit one like normal, but then I'm gonna do two here because it sets me up to be able to continue with the three, one, three, one, three, one pattern between the alternating white and black keys like that. So again, the first five notes, the fingering is one, three, one, three, one, and then between the two white keys, it's one, two, and then it's continuing alternating between three and one, three, one, three, one, two, and then if you continue, you know, you can play up and down pretty smoothly. But basically, you want to be able to play the scale. It's gonna take time, by the way. One thing I wanna mention is a lot of the students, when they first start, are kind of mad that they can't play the scale like I can. It takes a surprising amount of coordination to play the scale effectively. So you want to start out slow, pretty much like every lesson, right, if you watch my videos. You wanna start out slow, the scale very slow, and then maybe even for the first week, just practice it very slow until you develop the coordination, being able to switch between the alternating three and one and the one and two between the white keys. Just like that. Since we did the right hand, now we're gonna talk about the left hand. You're gonna start with one. So no matter which hand, if you're starting on C, you wanna start on one. And just like before, you wanna alternate between one and three. So one, three, one, three, and then this time, instead of one and two here, it's the opposite, since your fingers are the other way. So with your left hand, they're mirrored. So you have two, one, and then three, alternating three, one, three, one, three, two, one, just like that. And then coming down is the opposite. You go one, two, between the two white keys, and then you have three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, just like that. So that's the finger of the left hand. They're very similar fingerings, right? You alternate between three and one, and you use two and one, in the case of the left hand, one and two, of the right hand between the white keys. So this is one instance where the scale fingerings are almost the same. Now, how do you want to practice this? As I mentioned a little bit before, you want to start out slow. Maybe just ascending, going up, and then, you know, try coming back down very slow. If you feel like you just can't get it, you're probably going too fast. And if you try to play it too fast right away, then it will just fall apart on you and you'll get really frustrated that you're not remembering to switch. I mean, in your mind you may remember, but you know your fingers just can't keep up to switch between the alternating one and three and that one and two right there. And as you can tell, as you practice it, Get better and better at it. So here's how I recommend you practice it other than playing it slow for a few days, ascending, descending. So what you want to do 
is you want to start out you want to do this pattern so you want to start with the first two notes like that kind of like the jaws theme but then you want to add a note so you do the first two plus the third and then come back and then this time I'm going to add one note four notes and then come back and then I'm going to go up five notes and then I'm going to go up six notes and then I'm going to go up seven notes and come back down until I go through all of the notes in the scale whoops I went up too many that time I was supposed to come back down until you go up to the whole scale and what that will do is that will kind of train your hand to be able to play through different parts of the scale like when you go alternate between the first few you're really practicing just that first part of the scale and then by adding a note each time you're really getting more practice on areas of the scale as you move up and that will really help you solidify the scale you want to do the same thing with the left hand really all there is to it and then after a while you can practice it hands together but of course you want to remember when putting your first hands together to go slow and then go a little faster and then after that what I recommend to practice is to really get a solid understanding on it is in different rhythms, right? So at first I would just try playing it in quarter notes. And then try it in eighth notes. Try it in triplets. And then 16th notes or groups of four. Like that. Same thing with the left hand. So you, basically, you want to then work your way up. So you want to start with playing them as quarter notes, then play them as eighth notes. So you're making them twice as fast. Then you're playing them as triplets. Remember, you count that as one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, just like that. And then you break them up into sixteenths. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. Just like that. And then you also want to practice them multiple octaves. Also going like even, well, actually you practice them descending that way perfectly anyway. So no need to worry about that. But I would play them maybe up to four octaves. could probably practice it a few more times get it a little smoother this scale will come up a surprising amount of times I mean especially if you get into more advanced music like uh, sonatas or even like ragtime and things like that do little chromatic runs so learning the scale will come in handy at times but you know it's kind of a cool gimmick to be able to play them you know fairly smoothly Hello, Gregory. Welcome back to the live stream. Rich is... Okay, Rich says I forgot where you cross over. Okay, let's see here. All right, and that's pretty much it because I covered what the chromatic scale is. It's going from, you know, half steps up or half steps down, each note touching one another, or we also call those semitones. That's something I don't really mention a whole lot. If you hear people mention whole tones and semitones, they're talking about semitones are half steps and whole tones 
our whole steps. So I talked about what it was, I talked about how to practice it, and yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Like I said, it's going to be a shorter lesson today. Uh, mainly, it gives me a little bit of a break, but mainly because the subject matter isn't you know, super lengthy. I'm not making a huge list of suggestions. Just really this one thing. So practice this every day until the next live stream and let me know uh, how it goes. Hello students. If you enjoyed this lesson on how to play the chromatic scale and you want to learn more about how to play scales, you really need to check out this playlist and make sure to browse around the channel to check out to see if there are any other videos that you might find helpful. So thanks as always and have a great day.